this is your brand your business our goal for today was to talk about working with an agency and how you run successful campaigns because our guests are both involved in that and awesome at it um well at least one of our guests is but ernest my lovely co-host why don't you introduce yourself so that i can Hi. breathe for a second <laughs> so everyone give good vibes to galen because yeah he's gone through a lot to be picking hours on this uh but i'm ernest jones i'm a cpa um, and I do, I focus on taxes for broadcasters, uh, influencers, game devs, just the whole kind of gaming industry as a whole. And that's me. And Galen, why don't you actually introduce yourself since you did not do that in the I'm long-winded I'm trying in- to figure out if I can do okay. this somewhat better. I'm Galen Herbst Cortina. I'm a financial planner. I also work with streamers to make the smart money moves. Our guests, why don't you take it away, uh, Taffy, since I'm going to have to mute Noah for him to actually like come into play nope this isn't gonna work i'm gonna have to mute no unmute noah for him to come into play because his audio was so bad i tried guys it didn't work taffy why don't you tell us who you are i'll jump in hey everybody my name's taffy uh i am a binding of isaac streamer uh started making content back in 2011 uh i've had my hand in partnering for twitch channels and i've co-founded two youtube channels that have surpass the the million sub mark almost none of that had to do with me being anyone of repute or note i just i've been at this a really long time but it's only been in the last couple of years that i've actually found any sort of traction uh for my twitch channel which uh is finding its way in the last like 16 months after years and years of grinding it out so uh, with the exception of trying to figure out how to get noah in this damn call and not have him. We learned um, yeah. in the in the pre-show kind of gathering that uh, Taffy's basically ninja. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's because that's because uh, you, you, they're, I'm popular with the Russians, apparently. Yeah. So exactly. So somebody. Yeah. So much so that my my origins account was hacked by a Russian in 2016, and Apex has been the first reason that I've had to check <laughs> my my origins account in three years. So. Uh, Noah, this may be easier if we leave you muted and you just talk into Taffy's mic since you're both in the same place. Because right now I have you muted because in the background, you sounded like a buzz. Okay, let me unmute you and see if that works. All right. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. How, does it sound horrible? No. It's oh, good. Awesome. Cool. So, hi, everybody. I'm Noah Downs and uh, I am a lot of people's lawyers, but specifically Taffy's. Um, and I also happen to be sitting in his bedroom, which is not weird at all. So <laughs> can you um, give us a general lay of the land in there, please? Like uh, it's, a field report as it were. It's sparse. Uh, it is it is sparse, but wonderful. It's a lot of love in here. It is um, where the magic happens two or three times a year. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, that, is that a normal part of your operating agreement with clients? Yeah, so typically when I work with uh, with uh, management clients, uh, such as I do with Taffy, um, then uh, I like to really get in to know them and know every part of their lives. Um, and it's part of your so, standard writer contract, right? That's just it is, it is. That and the 9,000 brown M&Ms. So. We're, uh, we're, we're looking for sponsorship so that my wife and I can have more intimate time together. We're trying to figure out how we can, how we can go ahead and sell that, sell that ad space. If you want yeah. to sponsor Taffy, this is him. There you go. Let's get it. Speaking of, uh, you can go to meundies.com slash McLaffy Taffy. So. Right. There it is. Noah, Hashtag sponsored. Noah has a gift for sales that I wish I shared. And I think it's mostly shamelessness, but I wish that I shared it because my business would be three times as big if I could pull that off. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's very kind. All right. So now that we have you know introduced ourselves and I've gotten this lovely layout set up that... <laughs> I do. I feel bad for Loco. She worked really hard to make us something lovely, and um, I forgot to ask for a four camera layout, only a three camera layout. It was all <laughs> to be solved by Noah going to Taffy's, and then no. Anyways, um, our goal for today is to talk about working with an agency and how you run a successful campaign. Um, Noah participates in the running of an agency, and McLaffy Taffy is one of their clients, and McLaffy Taffy is one of those people who is just like wildly good at doing campaigns. He's naturally gifted. Yeah. 
So we want to uh, get his special insights on it. I am streaming Ernest from this tiny laptop with no second monitor. So if you could dive into some of the questions that we have, because presumably you can see them, that would help a lot. Because I have chat up on my phone, because that's the only way I can see it. <laughs> no, no problem at all. So you gave us a brief background. So one of our questions was kind of, what was your perceptions before you engaged with you know Noah? Kind of what was your perception of it, you know, an agent in general? And and feel free to, you know, this is your chance to just lay into Noah, by the way. Like, he, does it. he does it every day on stream, don't worry. He does. So okay, perfect. For, for the first YouTube channel that I that I co-founded, the, the the Noah role for a couple of years was was what I did. Like that was how what I handled for I I I was a stopgap measure. I was like the 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 official bona fide grown up. Uh, for a, for a bunch of people who started off, we were a circle of content creators, but out of that group came, I was trying to do Noah-esque things for like, uh, you know, Mr. Wuffles, Preston, Lachlan, um, Dai Denogla, you, Noah. Yeah, I'm muting Noah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, they're like that. I was I was that guy, especially for our YouTube channel. But then as the YouTube channel progressed and 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 altered itself and changed, um, they they needed just kind of the grown up in the room who could write a business email and could show up and be like, "Hey, what's going on? I've got this person with six figure YouTube subs. Would you give us a free laptop if we did X, Y, and Z for you?" Um, <clears throat> There was a part of me that just sort of worked under the assumption that for the longest time I, I wouldn't need that kind of representation because even even now like today I had a big milestone moment on my stream and I I peaked around 300 concurrents. So it's not like I'm 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 not like Sacriel or or you know Shroud or anything like that but it's crazy what I have realized in the last year is at about that size, at about the 50 to 150 concurrent range on Twitch is about the place where if things are going right, you should be busy enough making content that you you should need someone like Noah um, to maximize, like to really maximize the juice that you can get. Like ultimately, I could balance all this stuff, but like running running the stream, to, it, investigating new content, networking with people, playing games outside of the stream, going and playing Apex Legend on somebody else's stream for three hours at night because I know it's a good chance to hang out and make new friends and be in a different community as opposed to saying, oh, no, I can't talk to you tonight. I have to form formulate and format a really nice business letter to see if I can get a complimentary sit-stand desk or whatever. Like having somebody who's who's juggling that for you and, and is already working to network out that sort of spider web uh, is is useful about that transition point of like 50 to 150 concurrent viewers like that's the point that I, i'm sh i'm shocked like i'm shocked at what noah has managed to get done and i don't mean that in like a bad way i mean like i like when I, <laughs> I don't mean like i'm, I'm, I'm shocked when noah works but like um no like when he and i went after madrinas a couple years ago back at twitchcon i went up and i said okay let's let's go test it let's go taste it first I was like, I don't think they have any reason to talk to us, but if the coffee's bad, then we don't have any reason to talk to them in the first place. Uh, then we went and tasted it, and the coffee was awesome. And I was like, okay, I want to land this. Let, let's just pull out all the stops. And we went. And I am, I feel like I'm family with them now. And I feel like because of what we do with our community and how we really push product without feeling real sellouty about it, um, they love us now. But I don't think I would have gotten that without some of the quid pro quo stuff that Noah did to sort of keep me in the conversation as his leverage chip of, as a lawyer and as a manager, I will, you know, ne negotiate these couple of services for you if you'll leave the door open for my client. And that that gave me an opportunity I probably would not have been able to just brown nose my way into without him. Well, and that's really interesting that you said that, you know, at the, the 50 to 100 concurrent viewer mark is where you started seeing this need for representation. Do you think that because you had Noah in place that, you know, these sponsors viewed you as more kind of legitimate and that they were more willing to work with you because, you know, it was not just you negotiating on behalf of yourself, but you had Noah there to kind of bridge that gap and add that air of professionalism? Not Absolutely. That, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's the difference between, it's the difference between, um, you know, not not to say that Noah's set dressing, but there is that that bit of ceremonial touch to it that you walk up and your do your business cards say Ryan at McLaffyTaffy.com or do they say McLaffyTaffy at gmail.com? And it's like those little tiny touch. Do you have cards? You know, like those little tiny things and having someone like that saying, 
you know, have, it, it helps weed out crap brands too, where you have a brand reach out to you in your email because your business emails out there and they go, Hey, what's going on? We'd like to talk to you about blank. And I'm like, cool, here's my manager. He'll negotiate and, and, and talk to you on my behalf. And the crap people that are looking to like flex on small streamers and say, Hey, you're going to go to our stream team and we're going to have something on your overlay and we're going to do this, that, and the other thing all in exchange for like a $40 piece of product. And people jump at that because they don't have someone to tell them otherwise. And they just feel flattered to have been spoken to. Uh, yeah. You, you, you get respect from people who are willing to give respect and you, you bounce and filter sort of the crappy offers just by having that bouncer at the door. So it's a, it's a little tag and know it. It's sort of that saying, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this. There was a study that said, once you make a certain amount of uh, money, more of it doesn't make you happy. But once you hit that threshold, you notice it when it's not there, right? So, you know, the Gmail account, not having representation. So, so no, what do you think in terms of presentationally, you know, kind of what you offer and kind of what agencies offer? So I think that one of the key things that I offer is the ability to kind of weed through and make sure, first of all, that there is, there's no crap contracts. Um, anybody who is working with a so-called management agency, which are a dime a dozen nowadays, it's like walking through the tall grass and Pokemon. You're going to see a lot of crappy Rattata agencies. Any, any one of them that doesn't have the, the services of a lawyer or legal counsel of some sort is just kidding you because they can't go through a contract and tell you whether or not it's got the right stuff. They don't have, a lot of people have the ability to negotiate. You know that lawyers do. So if, if a management agency has lawyers on staff or somebody that they have a relationship with, that's huge. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest things I offer. I mean, quite honestly, Taffy sells himself. I just, you know, get the door open for him. Uh, he's really good at telling himself. Um, and so I think that it's not just the, obviously I, I, I Taffy mentioned this. I'm not just set dressing. It's, it's legitimizing, but I think that certain streamers need management, not necessarily to negotiate for them or to go out and get the opportunity, but to be there to make sure everything runs smoothly so that they can be working and doing their nine to five while that other person's out there hustling for them. So would you classify yourself as a shiny Pikachu or a shiny Ponyta? Um, I'm more like a shiny Pikachu, I think. Um, okay. like what, like with one of those, uh, like Santa hats on. Oh, okay. Not the bandana or the goggles like in Smash. Yeah, exactly. You get that. Frankly, the only yeah. Pikachu I care about now is the Luchador one in Smash Ultimate. So. Oh my God. <laughs> now we're off the rails. <laughs> Did we ever get on the rails is the question. Yeah. You, you so, clearly haven't watched the show much. So kind of. Taffy, back to you then. So did you, were you looking at multiple agencies or, or did Noah just kind of, how did you guys meet um, you decide it was a good fit? And how did well, you- it, was a, it was a, it was a Facebook post. I, I was working with an entertainment, like, so I was doing a lot of stuff for our side projects and our entrepreneurial endeavors, um, like 99 lives and pretzel. And uh, I, I had somebody doing contract work for me out of Miami that was charging. I don't remember. It was almost like four or $500 an hour. It was an entertainment legal agency out of, uh, out of Miami and they were nice guys. And that rate was like a friends and family rate. But I, I was just reaching a point where I was just like, I, these are simple. Like I need like NDAs, I need boilerplate stuff that I don't need to be charged several hundred dollars to produce. And so I put out a Facebook post to the Richmond area where we live and just said, I need like a local lawyer. Who's just a small business contract lawyer. Um, somebody help. And, and Noah had literally just passed the bar. It was just like, yeah, it's my specialties. And I was like, all right, cool. And so we went to, we started to talk and he was like, so like, what are you up to? I kind of caught a part of it, but like you're, you're playing video games and what now? And so I walked him through it and we took him to a con. We took him to PAX East and he was just like, yeah, this is it. I'm doing this. And I was like, cool. There's, I can name like three lawyers in this space and this space is the world. So, I mean, I can, I can tell you three you know, noteworthy lawyers right now that are angling for this and it's a multi-billion dollar a year industry. So run, go meet people. And that's, and that's I've got be- five, I got five names for you. Noah, 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 that's right. Noah, Noah. You know why, Galen? You missed Joel. No, because he spits hot fire. It's, it's a Chappelle show I know, joke. I'm aware. Trust me, I see that. Dialer. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No, um, 
So, so, okay. So then did you, how, what would you recommend then your, your situation is a little unique because you have this long history with Noah and yeah. maybe Noah can chime in on this too, is that when you're evaluating an agency and kind of representation, what are some of the key things you're looking for? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of running into this with like stream teams right now. Right. So I, like all the different things that are hitting me are, are the kinds of things that these sort of transition, like, okay, well, how, how seriously are you taking this as a job and a career path? And if, if, if seriously, what, you know, what are you looking for? And so, you know, it, it's, it, it's like any other service. I, if I like, you know, God forbid, if no one, I were to split tomorrow, my first thing that I do is I go around and, uh, find all my other friends that I know have representation and, um, you know, representation stream teams, all these people who are looking, you know, basically who are looking to either have their hand, you know, in your cookie jar, or they're looking to be latched on and around you or to, to add you to a roster or a bullpen. What do you, what are you getting in return? And for stuff like that, I get a lot of people that not a lot, but I get a handful of people who say, I'm, I'm not really sure what I got. I've got a couple of game keys, I guess. That's yeah. I've gotten a couple of free video games and I'm like, well, shit. Yeah. We all get free video games. Like we do that on our own. Um, so at that point, like I would be looking for somebody who does what Noah has done for me, which has been, you know, Hey, Noah, here's my wish list. And I mean, at the top of my wish list of all, of all the idiotic things that we've angled for the, as a moonshot type thing is Panda Express. Like, I was like, why not? You know, I was like, I'll do one stream a week in a Panda Express uniform. If they'll give me a thousand dollars a year in gift cards, like whatever, uh, uh, Panda Express dot live goes to my Twitch channel. So, you know. (laughs) (laughs) um i give him moonshots yeah no i give him moonshot stuff and i i know that in the last year noah's written like six snail mail letters to panda trying to see if we can get the whole like ninja celebrity chipotle treatment um this is like the kimmel bit when he would say like up we ran out of time for matt damon yeah like it just keeps hammering the bit until it comes true yeah my wife would be absolutely thrilled if there was some way that panda express was involved with streaming because Panda I'm trying to go to. I am trying so hard, man. Um, yeah. So like I give him moonshot stuff like that. Mandrinus was a moonshot thing and that one happened. And now I'm sitting here staring at I, there. It's mini fridge. It's there's nothing mini about it. It's the size of a coffin. Um, there's so like, it's so big. It took two UPS guys to get this in here. And now like that, that's cool. And I've got this great relationship with them. I've got this relationship, working relationship with MeUndies now, uh, which was like a goofy thing. But no, it's another thing that you look for is you find somebody who's willing to make you really think about what like stretch your boundaries a little bit. And there's a part of me that a couple of years ago, you know, Noah's like, I got MeUndies. Like, would you like to be sponsored by MeUndies? And I was like, that's so weird. I'm like, no, like, because nobody was doing like clothing unless it had their name on it, right? So, like, mm-hmm. now you see like Quip toothbrushes floating through, and you see MeUndies going through the space, and you see Soylent going through the space, and of course, you know, all the energy drinks going like none of that stuff was really there before, and nobody was really leveraging streamers. So, when MeUndies showed up, I was like, you know what? Like, he he got in my ear a little bit, it's like, eh, you know, man, it could be a cool thing. Like, it's not a crap brand, go look at it, it's really good stuff, they're good, like, it's a high quality. Uh, product is like just because nobody else is doing it, it just means that you've got nobody else to compete with as far as like your your code to go, you know, get hooked up. Um, and now that's like those are my travel underwear. Like anywhere I'm going, anytime I'm going anywhere, and now like yeah, like right now there's a there's a real big push with me undies in the space. And you know, I got I as a smaller streamer got my foot in the door with them because Noah said, Hey, stretch stretch your boundaries a little bit. Don't don't just instantly say no because it's goofy for a 38 year old man to be telling a bunch of video gamers to buy underwear with jalapenos on. <laughs> yeah, like step back. Hello, for a gamers. Second. Let's right. get this bread and also let's make sure you're comfortable in your underwear. Right. And so it's like, you know, we we we've we've looked at and said no to a couple of things that didn't make sense, but we've actually stopped and I've had somebody that I knew was objectively looking at it when we stepped back and went, does it make sense? And it's like all right, well, this one doesn't. Like, we really need to walk away from this one. But with other stuff, you know, you've got that person who, like, is rooting for you and has your best interest at heart. Uh, But they can also say, hey, listen, this is a good payday, and this is a thing that you, you know, you can push on your channel and not feel, you know, weird or ashamed about. Come at it from a different angle. And so, uh, that I mean, that was, that's... That, I mean, that's kind of it, is I've got like a business coach. I mean, that's kind of what Noah has been, has become like the guy who's my lookout. 
So on that note, then what I what I hear Taffy saying is that the two key things that you bring and that you should be looking at is what they can do for you, not necessarily rates or anything like that, but what they can do for you, and someone who will believe in you. And I'm and one thing we did, he didn't touch on, but I think this is also true, is being able to say like, no, this is a bad idea. Yeah, you kind of want to yeah go on and, that. And hopefully my audio isn't too terrible. Uh, the with what it's not just what they can do for you, but also I actually do think rates comes into it because if you're looking oh, at, yeah, I think if um, you're looking at somebody who wants to lock you into an exclusive two year deal and take 30%, not that I'm naming any particular companies, um, that's going to be really difficult if you get six months into it and they're just bringing you crap deals because then they're, they're not paying attention. They're fulfilling their obligation and taking whatever you end up do taking out of desperation. Um, uh, thank you, Loco. I appreciate it. Um, and so, uh, but what I would say is that what you really need to find is not necessarily someone who can go through and find you the Red Bull. Um, you need to go through and find you somebody who knows what your brand is and how you're going to, and how it's going to work in with your stream. You need to know someone, you need someone who's a fan of your content. Um, and I think that's one of the most important things. And I think another aspect of it is I'm sure there's been friction points between, two, you know, not, maybe not actual like disagreements, but just like, hey, I think we should do this. And then, you know, you've got to present oh, no, it to fought. each other. Yeah. So, yeah, we 100% I mean, have fought. And, oh, yeah. And I think that's important because that's not just a, a yes person, right? Just saying like, yeah, let's do this deal. Let's do this deal. Let's do this deal. Mm -hmm. And kind of, you know, it's, it's what you said, Taffy, is that, you know, he has your best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he's going to be a vocal um, advocate for your interest and how do you hit your goals on your wish list. Right. Yep. So right. I want a Madrinas refrigerator as big as a coffin so I can be buried in it. Yep. Make it happen. How do we get there? Yeah. yeah. And, and it's also, you know, hopping out there and it's having somebody that will bring you something that is completely out of left field, like me undies. Um, because I can turn to Taffy and say, Hey man, this is a great idea you should do for your stream. But at the end of the day, he's got to sit down and live with, you know, this is going to be his sponsor. And so I can't be there trying to override him just because I'm trying to make a payday. Right. It's kind of like something, not to name anyone, but like that that game uh, site that a bunch of people, you know, right? Uh, I don't, right? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So, I mean, that's an issue, right? Like you probably wouldn't have advocated for that because no. of the issues with it. And so- right. Thing, you know you need to be aware of um so do you guys do this is a little insider baseball about your guys relationship do you guys do kind of semi-annual or like checklists like okay this is where we were at the start of the year this is where we are how do we get next step or stuff like i'm sure you guys have those touch points though yeah well taffy and i are unique in that we like live five minutes from each other so um i can i talk to taffy all the time i'm over here at least once a week and um but with my other mint clients that I manage, I, I do try and do at least an every other week touch base, see where we are, um, make sure they're comfortable coming to me and saying, hey, I want this, this, and this, and saying, hey, I need to be accountable to them about, hey, what have you done? Have you followed up on this particular sponsor? And making sure that I'm doing that. That's part of my job is to hold up to it, but I want them to be comfortable coming to me and saying, hey, I haven't heard anything on this. What the hell is going on? So I'm yes. going to ask, Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah, this last this last year, which has been crazy. I I don't know what I did that made things start to go right this time. Me last neither. Year. Like this time last year, this was a this was a part time job that paid for itself and a little bit more. And then I I had a February a year ago something happened and the switch flipped and now it's full time. And I I don't know. It's just I, I was just here. I guess I don't know. I was here at the right time with the right people watching, and now those people are my are my pa patrons. Um, it, it's, it's weird because sometimes you just hit, you hit that corner and everything just kind of clicks. Yeah, like, I spent <clears throat> you know, in a months, lot of careers. Yeah, I spent two months turning to my wife basically and saying like, "What if it was like this every month? Like this would be a living wage." And we giggled. And we were like, "Okay, no, really, though, which Olive Garden am I going to end up managing in six months when this all falls apart?" Uh, and then it did. It, it, it panda? No, you have to stay on brand, it dude. If I go to Panda, I'm going to eat myself out of any profit. <laughs> My wife's gonna be like, "How did you make nine dollars? You worked ninety hours this week." Like, I can't talk to you right now. I am so full. But that orange chicken, so I'm good. So full of like honey walnut shrimp. 
<gasps> um, so I like the last year has really just been what is it like a uh, paddle like a duck? It's just uh, paddle like hell, but stay calm on the surface. And so that's kind of what the last year has been. It's just been us trying to figure out how, like, okay, well, I guess this is my office is like our little HQ, and this 2018 was like established. Like our goal, our long six, like 12 month goal was established. Like get, get a solid foundation put down, and then 2019 is uh is you know how do you expand how do we take like uh people we admire you know ninja and munition like the people who really have their shit about them and go okay how do we how do we comparably you know mimic that scale for what we're doing so one one um, thing i wanted to ask explicitly um because i didn't realize that those contracts still existed out there would you ever advocate signing an exclusivity deal uh, I mean, of course, the factors could be there where it makes sense, but just as a general rule. Yeah, I would. I would say yes. You should sign an exclusivity deal if you if you are at the right level where your management is going to be able to basically do just that. Manage. They're not sourcing that much. Um, so I know that coming into you, but you're not actually actively searching for deals. You mean? Right. So things are coming into you. You're not actually searching. That's when you are looking at a exclusivity deal because that, that management company will come to you and they will bring you the deals that are currently in the stratosphere for you, but they'll also help you smooth over the deals that you um, already have coming in and help you weed them out. I know that there are, are two management companies that I have exclusive contracts that I fully believe in. Um, and that is it. Quite frankly, if if you are if you are signing an exclusive contract, you really need to look long and hard at it, and look then look at how long the actual contract is. Well, and I think part of the argument around that too is what Taffy was just saying. Um, a year ago, this was part time, and now it's full time. And if you just signed a, you know, if 2019 is an extension of 2018, and he signed a two year exclusive thing, well, that could lock him into a pretty bad deal. Right. Yeah. And it, it would have, that's why, that's why my agency, um, and uh, to say the name so that I don't get yelled at later, it's broaden. Um, the website go website's going live at some point. Um, I have to I've talked to my developer about that, but, uh, we, uh, essentially we have non-exclusive contracts cause we never want to get in the way of our clients making money. So if, the, if something comes in and we don't touch it, we don't earn any of that money. So there's no point for them, us to take a cut of it. All right, so some fun stuff then. I've got oh. Galen's questions here. Um, how do you end up deciding campaigns you're picking? Like, what's your decision matrix for that? I think that's a taffy question. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a taffy question. Um, well, I mean, like, you know, the 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 black and white, plain and simple of it is 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 it is it worth my time to pull away from the content that I'd normally be making? So, say it's the Binding of Isaac. Is I'm doing really well. I got good viewership. Uh, the audience is pumped. Good bits and subs are coming in. Is it worth my time to deviate and to drop a rock in the middle of that river? Uh, so you know that that's like the the cold calculating part of it. But then after that, it becomes can can it be fun? Can it be exciting? Does my audience get anything out of it? Um, I had I had one day that Noah brought to me that I was really hemming and hawing about it, and the big. Uh, the big uh, thing that swung it for me was the the company said, we'll give you 700 bucks worth of stuff to give away to your audience. And I was like, sold. That's pretty great. Done. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. And then it was like, you know, ultimately it doesn't do me any good if it's something that's completely, yeah, brand, brand deaf, even if it's so good money. So you hit on something interesting is how do you – determine how you strike that balance between, you know, your normal content and these activations? Uh, I, I am so ridiculously level with, like, I, somebody asked me, they're like, how, how do you do, how do you do campaigns? You, you move product and you're, you move product, like your channel's five times bigger than it is. And I, I, I wear that with a badge of honor. And it's because I. Didn't you like sell on par with co-carnage for Madrinas? That's, that's. I it, I, it is rumored. It is rumored that I had the the second was this, the second best uh, branded six ounce presale coffee launch that Madrinas has ever had behind Co Carnage in their first one. So um, you're the Walter White of Madrinas. 
I, you know, man, I'm money balling the shit out of this thing is basically what it's boiling down to is that I have like a few but fierce collection of audience members that are all, we're all older. I mean, we're all in our late twenties to mid, I have one of one viewer who's 47. They're all gainfully employed. Some of them have been following me. I had a, a, a kid who started watching me in middle school that now just got accepted to MIT um, and dropped in and dropped like 60 bucks and was just like, yo, Taffy, I've been watching you since the eighth grade. Let's go champ. And I was like, God almighty, good for you, man. Um, and I'm, I, I level with them like in a crazy, I level with them to a crazy extent. And it started with years ago, me joking and saying, yo, Chad, if we ever hit a big, I'm going to ram so much useless shit down your throat. Like I can't <laughs> wait to sell out. And it was a joke. And then like actual offers showed up and I, it started with the whole me undies thing. And I'm like, this is crazy. Me undies gave me some money. I'm here will you guys support the first company that ever supported us? They're like, you are damn straight. We are. And it helped that my audience had, I already had people that were, that were buying them and saying like, yo, I actually already support that brand. And that the synergies like that, uh, the bounty system on Twitch is another really good example right now where I, I I'll play Isaac, you know, for four or five hours and I'll get a bunch of people in there and I'll say, Hey chat, can we make this, you know, can we make this paper? And like, they're like, yeah, we'll give you 60 minutes. Let's go. And we go and do whatever it is. We we make it fun collectively. And it never feels like a hard sell. And also to the point of the bounties, what's really cool is when that same company is really trying to make a hard push and they pop up on the bounty. And so Taffy can claim the bounty, but then they also pay for a campaign for like a two hour. Taffy pay, plays this game for two hours and then he does an hour for the bounty and then he gets three hours back to back and he gets paid double. It's awesome. And those those brands are comfortable with us doing that. Oh wow! So oh, oh, long long story short is whenever I switch off of whatever the content is, like I, I'm you know I'm not an idiot. People want to watch me play the Binding of Isaac. Period. Full stop. That's the end of people showing up on Twitch because they want to watch me play a game. If I switch to Apex Legends, if I for fun, if I switch to um, branded content to make money, if I switch to anything else, so far with a few notable exceptions, uh, people leave. And I, I just try to figure out what the balance is. And I, I keep a, a, a bat phone of communication open with them where I'm just like, guys, if it ever gets to be too much, you guys have to, like, somebody has to call me out and I trust them to, to hold my hand on that. Um, and I promise never to sell them a shit product. Like that. I mean, that's yeah. just kind of the thing is I'm just like, I'll bring you Madrinas. I'll bring you me undies. Um, I'll, I'll only pick games off the bounty board that makes sense, even if it's in a goofy way. Like I'll, I will make it fun if it doesn't fit. Otherwise, there's I mean there's stuff that's gone, gone to seed on the bounty board because I was like it just doesn't fit. So w would you say is there a key element that you've been able to kind of extract from all the successful campaigns you've had that that is fundamental to all of them across all activations? And then Noah, after Taffy answers, could you say you know chime in from your perspective from someone you know not from the outside looking in but a little closer to it? And with more broadcasters working. Yeah. Um, the thing that ties all mine together is that I, 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 I know the DNA of my viewership. Like uh, we, this is a community that didn't pop up overnight. I wasn't fed a host from a big viewer and then just retain people based on my skill or whatever. This is like a, uh, this is like a church group. I mean, this is like, I, I get there, I brew the coffee, I put the chairs out and then they're as much there for, uh, you know, for each other as they are for me. It's um, called. I, yeah, yeah. We joke. We joke the word. Emotes, right? Um, but the big, like the big thing is, is that I know, and, and, and they know that I know, they know, I know which buttons to push with them. And especially like I went to Boise state, the, the thing about Boise state is it, it's an underdog program with a chip on its shoulder. And so I bring that, I bring that into like what we're, uh, where'd you go, you go to like Oklahoma or something like that? Somebody UNLV missed. beat your school just last week. So suck it. I believe oh. it. That's, that's <laughs> basketball though. That's basketball though. That's basketball though. That's basketball. <laughs> I was going to say, we, 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 God, do we ever like to be thought of as a football school? So it's, it's, like, it's like, we beat North Carolina at football. <laughs> we that's beat a week. No, no. They, at had football. Years ago, and they were really good. They would bomb threes before that was like the prevalent style. They were Boise State, that, like Boise State hit a spike where their basketball team was good for a couple of years. They're in a bit of a rebuilding slump right now, but for a couple yeah. of years, we, we couldn't wait to go get knocked out of the tournament in the first round. <laughs> Um, for the record, go Hokies. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's the, it's the, the, we're the underdog and Madrina's really fed into that. And the, there's no shame about it because we, 
at some point, if I push too hard, they'll let me know. But for the most part, it's, hey, everybody, we've been told that we can't, like, if, if we can move blank, like, blank many hundreds of units in the next two months with Madrinas, they'll send us a branded mini fridge. I, I um, straight up say, you were running a Madrinas thing, and I was relatively new to the community, no had introduced us. And I was like, oh, great, yeah, I'll go buy it. I've been looking at that anyways. I'll go via the link and buy it. And they had this thing going, it was like the first... 250 people got this deal and I was like oh sweet that's a nice extra little discount and then it was like order number 1500 something I was like Ooh. okay well I didn't get that discount I thought I was going to get because I was way outside of early enough and did not realize that that's um you, you know I've, I've, I've got prize. I've got enough viewers that consider my channel home base because I float to a, a half dozen channels in the course of a day. And of course, my, like mine's my home, but I can think of three off the top of my head that it's like when my channel shut down, that's probably where I'm going because that's the community that I like, the broadcaster I like, the game that I like watching. Um, and so, yeah, my, my chat likes to get riled up. I mean, it's like, it's just like anything else with Twitch, right? So you've got uh, St. Jude play live summit last year. They want to go for a million dollars. Twitch hits two. And it's just, it's that Twitch mentality of everything, including who gets built up as brands and who gets to be successful as sponsors that can be that's a game it's a that's the competitive nature of twitch uh whether we like to admit it or not i know the viewer like viewership numbers and the game of twitch itself that's a game to me so like numbers and viewership and manipulating like all the data to make the channel do what i want it to do and make the brand successful i like that game as much as i like playing isaac um and and chats in on that i do all of that you know it's like an open air kitchen it's like you're watching the meal be made behind the line it's not coming from some closed off back room somewhere and so i'm you know i'll tell them oh yeah we had a great meeting with madrinas we've got some cool stuff coming up and they you know if, if as long as they feel looped in the they have an ownership of the success or failure of of uh those kinds kinds of campaigns no what do you think about successful key element I think the key element to a successful campaign is an honest endorsement. Um, Taffy made it very clear and all of my clients have made it very clear that they will not sell something they don't believe in. Um, that's why all my clients, like for example, MeUndies is doing a campaign with us right now and our clients need product in order to give a pro like a proper um, endorsement. They're not going to sell their, their audience's crap. Because the Twitch audience, their their chat is not going to have the opportunity to, to sample the product until they've spent money and shipping. Because you can't go into a store and try it. You can't go in and, well, actually, you can go to any, you know, Sheets and buy Madrinas now. Um, by the way, go to Madrinas and buy Sheets and tweet at McLaugh to have your receipt. So, um, but uh, I think that the key there is that you need to have an honest endorsement. You're not just going to take something because it's, you know, the first sponsor that's ever approached you. Um and say, oh yeah, well, you know, if I don't try doing a sponsor now, it'll never work out. Uh, you need to actually try and make it work, and that's how you get a successful campaign. The key is though, if you do too many of it, too many of them at once, and you don't have a handle on whether or not your chat will support, say, four campaigns at a time, don't test it because you could lose your chat, and your chat is how you, you know, support yourself. So then I like putting hats on hats after these questions. So essentially, the two key things are knowing your community and actually being sincere and you're selling out, right? right, like right. We joke about selling out, but it's like, look, I would use this product. I think right. it's good. There's I mean, like of Twitch chat that will call sell out at anything, but like, I think like Taffy was saying, if you built up a really dedicated community, that's that sell out can be a positive thing, especially if it ties in super well. Right. Plus, I mean, we, we have a sellout emote and we've joked about selling out before, but chat saw it for what it was, which was I streamed for them for a couple of years without really making any money my heart's in it for the right reason i there there wasn't i mean there wasn't there wasn't money in twitch when i started like the, the people who had made it in twitch were talking like cobalt was talking about how great it was that he could rely on minimum when he showed up to stream isaac years and years ago and so i logged a couple of years of doing that and we joked it was all pie in the sky stuff where it was just like hey guys when panda express just starts bringing me my lunch because i asked him to won't that be a day and uh it, you know, the, the funny thing is, is that, you know, I'm, I'm close enough with my community now that it's not, it's reframed. It's not selling out. It's holy crap. Ryan's got money to pay his bills. And Do you so, guys remember, um, this was maybe five or six years ago, when all these indie bands, like you find them and then they would sell out to a car commercial yeah. and that would basically finance 
like the whole year for them. It's like, okay, go and stuff like that. We're just yeah. like, oh, we're viral yeah. internet sensations. It's like, now we're on a car commercial. And it's like, oh, and we I all have houses now. friends and I, they would be so mad. And I'm like, do you like them? Yeah. Yes. Right. Want them to then, succeed. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. that's the that's the that's the long and the short of it is like we joke about selling out, but my chat seems like my chat has a high. I have a chat with a high Twitch IQ, mm -hmm. and they're all adults, and they know that I got kids who wander in and out, and I've got a wife that you know has been sick for years and has just turned in the corner, like has turned the corner on it in the last year and a half, two years. Uh, you know, they they know that I'm coming back here because I want to be here and not because I saw Ninja play with Drake and all of a sudden. <laughs> I put Twitch you know, I put TTV on the end of all my gamer tags, and now I just want to be famous. No, that works. I mean, that's what I'm doing wrong, I think. That's probably you know, I mean you're you're basically a ninja. Uh basically no, ninja. Wow, nice, nice. No, could we that, that, that's our uh, that that's our meeting. That's our setup for the next 12 months meeting that we'll have is for me going to make sure that I have TTV on the end of all my gamer tags. <laughs> you do that, we're gonna lose every single sponsor you got. <laughs> Rightfully so. so. So okay, so Oh, go ahead, Galen. The, the next one I wanted to ask, we talked about sort of the key elements that make it successful. What what prep work goes into a campaign for you and what do you do follow-up-wise with the sponsor themselves? I kind of want to talk about what goes in before we even bring it to to the client. Sure. So yeah, when that. we we obviously have the the cold calls, we got the, um, the, the reach outs, we get a list of potential sponsors that the clients are interested in. And we reach out and honestly, I'll send 10 emails out and people are learning about Twitch now. But when I first started, I'd send 10 emails out and get one back. And it was like an auto res out of the office responder. I was going to say, that's um, better than my rate. So. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm also real. Yeah, well, I mean, I can teach you something then. Um, and then, uh, but now it's more like I send out 10 emails, we get seven back and, you know, maybe four of them are interested, but that's a higher rate. Now, the next question is, what's their budget? What's their cost per acquisition of a new customer, you know, where can we work within that? How much profit do they need to make? Once we work all those details out, we are able to take it to the client and we figure out which clients are right for a campaign. Now, I want to say that I bring every single campaign to every single client, but we've got clients who are, say for example, they're, they're family friendly streams and we can't bring them something that's covered in blood and guts. So we don't necessarily bring that to every single client. Once we bring it to the clients, we see who's interested, what their, what their threshold would be. Occasionally, we have clients that say, hey, you know, I'm not interested in that game, but I'll play it if the price is right. And then we quote an ungodly number, and then sometimes the game, you know, goes through with it. It's a matter of figuring out how much the client's time is worth to do whatever they're promoting. No, um, Noah, just ah. made a really good business point. How do you, how do you like that? Let's go. No, it just made a really good business point, which is if there's a project that you don't want to take on, but is within like what you do, just quote an unreasonable number on it. And sometimes you'll get it and you'll be like, all right, now it's worth it. There's, yeah, there's a saying for too. things like that. So Galen, let me hit you in the face for $10 no. and you'll say, no. Okay. So we've agreed that you'll let me hit you in the face. Yeah. It's just a matter of price now. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, it's a million dollars. Done. Huh? Well, huh? <laughs> huh? He's got to pay his attorney's fees so, uh, for, for, you know, doing the personal injury lawsuit. So, uh, but yeah, no. So once we get it to the client, then we work with the client to figure out what their campaign is going to look like. And then that's Taffy's job. Yeah. Like it, I, I, with the exception of, um, you know, some game devs. So like uh, tiny build came, came and hung out in, in my chat a little bit and did a little back and forth uh for rapture rejects uh so if there are people who are actively uh, uh um fractured lands came in spent a lot of time and got constructive feedback and kind of took a, a gauge of, of people's feel for the game but like for the most part especially when it's something like me undies i i i don't know about you but i know me well enough to know that i don't always want me talking to the like to the brand unless it's unless it's gaming gaming i speak that language but the language of like uh corporate uh clothing company give me deliverables if they want to talk to me let them talk to me but for the i mean like i actually have a pretty decent business head on my shoulders and and know how to censor myself and and as broadcasters a lot of people they're successful on whatever the hell they think is kind of flying out without a censor or without any sort of filter 
and it's it, it can be two people speaking completely different languages. And I've seen relationships like that go down in flames because the broadcaster and the sponsor just didn't speak the same language. So if if I need to be in contact with them for like a uh, a ramp up and then a, a cool down or whatever, or if I need to be spoken to because uh, expectations weren't met, especially, and I'm, I, you know, I'm giggly to get into those because I don't ever want to feel like I, you know, I'm, I'm as much beholden to the people who give me their money expecting results as I am to the community that's happy that I took money from the big nameless corporation. Um, so on that though, so kind of, Specifically, are there metrics that they're looking at specifically or metrics that you're looking at before or after to evaluate success? And yeah. what are the common elements to that? Yeah, so the metrics that most brands look at are cost per acquisition of new customers and cost per acquisition of returning customers. And so um, every, every brand has a number, a budget that they've set for that. And the key is to make sure that they are, they are going to make money on it and have a good conversion rate. Now, if you get to a brand that's only going to pay you for new customers and won't pay you for returning customers, you really shouldn't work with them because they're, they're going to quickly run out of the customers that you can provide and you won't have any more use to them anymore. So um, specifically, you're talking about, they set a budget, we're going to spend $1,000. And from that, our expectation is that we're going to have 200 new customers and 100 returning customers from that well, dollar spent? Well, so it's more like, you know, we're going to spend, you know, $60 per new customer and we're going to get spend $30 per returning customer, that kind of thing. Um, and so it doesn't matter, you know, how many you get as long as the, the proper, you know, numbers met. So that allows them to work with, you know, small affiliate size streamers, nothing wrong with affiliates. Um, that as long as they are meeting uh, their expectation in terms of the cost per acquisition, it doesn't matter what size the streamer is. Um, some streamers are going to be more efficient because, you know, a, a taffy streaming to 200 people is going to be much more efficient than, you know, uh, me streaming to three people when I start streaming in March. Um, and then, uh, but oh. the, I know every March. And so, but at the same time, it, that means that you are not prevented from getting into sponsorships just because you're smaller. So Galen said in chat, we're going to ask uh, Taffy one more question, but if you have questions for either about anything we've discussed, go ahead and throw that in the chat so we can, you know, get those questions out. Okay, Taffy. So you said Panda Express is the number one, the crown jewel company you want to work with. Okay? It's true. We're so, still working on it. We're still working on it. And are there any other companies that would be the dream gig to work with outside of that? Oh, man, um, don't mess this up, Daffy. This is your moment. <laughs> okay, so I know. Like, all right, so um, my my wife started streaming at, at nights on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as 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 part time income for her. She's got her own thing, so I know the, the dream for her would be Audible because she's actually trying to go back to get her graduate degree uh, to become a sexy librarian. I don't know what I don't remember what the name of the actual business title is called. That's all I hear and see in neon lights in my head is that sexy librarian. So, um, so audible for her. God, for me, I don't know, man. I landed Madrinas and like it's all just been me riding a rainbow down, down just this amazing endorphin rush about that. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, there's a part of me that as there's a part of me that uh, as, as sort of mainstreamy as it sounds. It would be it would be a, a huge weight off my shoulders slash a dream come true to land a hardware slash peripheral company. My streaming PC is like six years old at this point, and so I, I purchased. Yo, you guys need to stop knocking on my door. Can you not hear me talking in here? I will be out in a minute. Dad Taffy strikes again. Taffy back on to talk about streaming with children. <laughs> So, yeah, has a, uh, a, a hardware uh, company that he would not recommend to bring it full circle. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not going to show so, that okay. one publicly. So uh, we've got um, one question in the chat right now. So from Rita Van Graaff, are there different methods that are used when it comes to a smaller streamer reaching out to other companies versus a larger streamer? How would yeah. you separate, you know, where's that cutoff between small and large from your perspective and what differs when you're reaching out? Well, quite frankly, when you're reaching out as a smaller streamer, you've got to be note perfect everywhere um, because people are going to see, oh, and they're going to expect everybody to be a ninja. That's the thing is these companies see Twitch and they see ninja and they expect everyone to be ninja. 
Not everybody's ninja. I don't know if anybody knows. I mean, Taffy's basically ninja, but that's about it. Basically. Um, that's three. Well done. And uh, thank you. And uh, but when you're a smaller streamer, you've got to be note note perfect. You got to hit that initial letter. You got to make sure there's no spelling mistakes. You got to be professional about you gotta, it. You got to be dressed for the job you want, not the job you have in that situation. Like it, there's no harm in carrying yourself like a professional, even quote as a smaller streamer. Whatever. You're, like you're either a professional streamer or you're not. Viewer count doesn't matter. Like you're either a professional. It's you're, it's either your hobby or it's your job, and it doesn't like it. Every every advancement that I've had in the last ten years of doing this, like the first breaks that I got were, you know, breaks. Let me look, look back; it's not all that great, but like the machin machinima, like my buddy and I started our YouTube. Yeah, rest in peace, absent chat for machinima. Oh no, um, it's too soon. Um, but yeah, like the the like my buddy and I wanted to be machinima directors, and like way back in the day, that was the hotness, and you wanted to do that, and we had like a thousand sub YouTube channel, but we liked our content and we had faith in the quality of the content. So I popped them a cold email at like three in the morning because I just couldn't stop obsessing about it. And I sent him, sent them one of our videos. And the next thing I knew is we were Machinima and Machinima Respawn directors. And that's, that's what made our channel. And that's what changed us from nobody imitators to being in on the other side of the velvet rope and involved with other professional content creators. And it was all me sending out a, a well written here, here are the pros. Here's what I can offer. Here's what, here's what we do that's different from everybody else who wants to be on your platform. And they reached out to us the next day and inked us up. And it was a bad contract. And if I'd had a Noah, I would have known. <laughs> but, yeah. but you know, like those, the, when when you're you got to start small, unless you're like born in as royalty to some you know crazy entertainment family or something like that. Everybody starts small. So that's, I would all, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I was I was gonna kind of add to that is when you're starting small, it's you you got to think about where your channel is going to be going. So like obviously Taffy wasn't thinking about where he's going when he's getting that initial uh, go out, but you know obviously smaller streamers aren't gonna nail Monster or Red Bull, but say you did and for um, and for purposes of, of of illustration, you have Red Bull reach out and they're like, hey, you're you're an affiliate, but we want to sponsor you, and you hate Red Bull. Say you hate Red Bull. And you want monster. That's your dream. That's your, what you want. You take that Red Bull sponsorship, then that could conflict you out of getting monster down the road. So you got to think about what your goals are and have those goals in mind as you navigate it. Yeah. I think it's, also too reasonable to think about the difference between, and I've, this is something I've harped on in the past, um, being sponsored by and affiliated with someone. Um, yeah. You know, sponsored by is what Tabby was talking about in terms of, like even things from the bounty board are getting paid to play a game or stuff like that or you know if they're giving you hardware uh and they're a hardware company affi affiliated with is like the madrina thing where it's a commission sales position that's not wrong or bad or even bad for earning uh mm -hmm. commission salesmen can make bank but it's also a difference between what are you actually seeking out and early on probably what you're going to get offered is commission sales positions because it's very low risk for the company that's a, the, the first one I ever took was an affiliate link with a company called mom and popcorn.com. Like that was, That's that was the only people who would talk to me. <laughs> that was a great, it was a great name. They, they sent me complimentary product and it was the best damn gourmet popcorn I'd ever had. And so, Oh dude, the dessert stuff, the dessert stuff was crazy. When I was in Dallas, I got to visit the place that they made the popcorn and they gave me like latex gloves and let me just go through and just eat out of the barrels. And I ate until I was sick because on my shitty little Twitch channel, I was their top affiliate link in all the world because we were all giggly that we had like a company yeah. interested in our little Twitch channel. Um, but that was, that was, yeah, that was where I started. It was like, that was the company that we talked to. I put my entire weight behind it as though it was my company that I was trying to make successful. Um, it was just an affiliate link, but like now it's, <clears throat> it's graduated to uh, Madrinas, who is actually a paid sponsor of the channel and but yeah but it's like all those different degrees in between that's also the leverage that i'll use for like if somebody comes at me hard and says like we want this 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 and this and i'm like you're giving me an affiliate link and no product no you don't get all that you get whatever time and effort i'm willing to do, but don't make additional demands you know because unless you're going to start cutting a check in which case i'll get madrina's tattooed on my forehead because they've got my back and they send me money so yeah but like yeah if you're just I've seen that. I've seen people do that. I've seen people like full blown brand their channel because they got an affiliate link. And it's like, why? Well, and that's yeah. what Adrenus has, right? The spot in your overlay. I've seen at least yeah. on your, your, your sort of 
uh, waiting for games load and stuff like that overlay is that's valuable valuable real estate and they're paying you for it versus affiliate links mm-hmm. you know, below yeah i don't give it i don't give that spot to anybody else right now yeah. like uh, you know, you know, getting a temporary campaign push but like madrinas lives as part of my channel's branding now because they have you know walked out into the spotlight and said we claim taffy I was yeah like, it's like it's like getting drafted you're like ah oh, hot shit yeah that's the team i wanted to go to so yeah i yeah uh, and so, damn, I haven't thought about that in a while. One one of the main things to think about when you're looking at affiliate ship versus sponsorship is an affiliate ship is you will either get, you know, you know, a little bit of product or you will get a commission, a purely commission. So you get like, you know, $10 per sale, but no base within a sponsorship. They're paying to be there on a regular basis. You're getting a monthly stipend. You're getting something like that. So um, you can have a, a true sponsorship that also has affiliate aspects. Say, you know, you get paid a two hundred dollar base, and then you get fifteen dollars per sale. That that is a true sponsorship. If you just get the fifteen dollars per sale, or if you just get the product, that's an affiliate ship, and you should not devalue yourself to throw that all over everything. Agreed. All right. So I think we're we're on the hour. I don't see any other questions in chat. Uh, so. As a wrap up, tell us where to find you. Tell us about you know who you are one last time, and also who you're maining in Apex Legends, or who you would main if you could play it. Because oh, yeah, like, I have not even watched <laughs> the game at all, except for really, I watched Taffy play it briefly uh, a couple days ago. I think it was, and as well today for a bit. And I was just really fucking sick and tired of all of my hardware issues. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna go on Twitch. And I'm gonna watch something. That was my job. I'll, I'll jump in. I'll, I'll take the spotlight. What yeah. I'm I'm not afraid at all. Um, my name is Mick Laffy Taffy. Uh, I'm, I'm old salty ass gamer on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Mick Laffy Taffy playing the Binding of Isaac in the mornings and either whatever the hell I want in the afternoons or whatever my chat has paid for me to play. Noah, I will choke the life out of you. You keep shuffling around. You Noah. gotta hold still. Well, we're at the end now. It doesn't matter. Make all the noise you want. Okay, sounds good. So um, that's that's McLaffy Taffy. So yeah, twitch.tv forward slash McLaffy Taffy. I play the Binding of Isaac in the morning. I play whatever I want in the afternoon. Or chat pays for me to play. Uh, the last one was Subnautica. And right now, oh, oh so so stupidly good. Uh, they play. They pay. They paid a bunch of bits for me to play it because they knew I was terrified of the open water, like of the ocean. And they were like, "Oh well, that sounds great. We'll watch you be sad." And it was it's the sticker shock. I was just like, one hundred thousand bits, chat in like two weeks." And they're like, "That's chump change. We got you." And they did it. And I was like, "Well, fuck. Now I have to play this game." Higher. I would say Negor accept like two million or whatever it was bits for her to get the uh, swim in a dirt pool thing that she did at the start of last year. Yeah. Oh my God. With with mine, it's like uh, sheer she sheep many times skin it only once, and I just my my I'm terrified of setting sticker shock on my chat and having them be like, "Well, screw you, I'm gonna go somewhere else." It's like no, 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 no it's, it's, it's a negotiation, right? Like we can. So um, Apex, I'm playing uh, uh, Bloodhound, but I've been learning uh, I've been learning caustic. And he's broken, and I like that because I'm not great. And you shouldn't watch me play Apex because I'm basically just playing for myself with the camera on, and there's nothing for you to gain other than to watch an old man fail, which is funny, I guess. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, again, full blown transparency. I'm ass terrible at Apex, but I've been playing it a lot because it's a fun game. And uh, I'm laughing happy most everywhere else. So cool. Uh, my name is Noah Downs, but you can find me everywhere as my lawyer friend, except on Instagram where I'm my dot lawyer friend because I was a little bit late to the game. Um, and uh, TV yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, underscore XXXXX420. Um, that's you, <laughs> that's me. Um, and uh, so I think, uh, what is what is the medic character that I'm playing? Uh, Lifeline, yeah, what's yeah. the name? Lifeline's yeah, great. yeah, there you go. I love Lifeline. I'm, the reason I'm playing Lifeline is because I was watching Taffy play Lifeline. And I was like, huh, that seems like a great support character. Um, and I need a lot of health because I get shot up a lot. So, um, but uh, yeah, you can find me everywhere. I'm a lawyer, I'm a manager. And uh, I would, currently I am in Taffy's bed. So what does so, it smell like in there? No, oh, you know, wash. Thank you very much. My <laughs> wife keeps a clean house, and I live in this office. No, this office. I was thinking like la- lemons or lavender. I was thinking like, set, nah, like oh man, that's a, like we go in there to it smell. It smells like my hot breath and laundry detergent. Like well, that's, that, it that is did not, before I was in here for the last hour. Yeah, I was gonna say it smells a little different. It's been hot box. 
Uh, I'm Ernest Jones. I'm a CPA. I do tax work for broadcasters, influencers, um, game devs, all that good stuff. And well, shh. Um, I'm naming Pathfinder because zip lines, guys. Come on. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm, sure you to someone. I'm like the, the, the spaceship kid from uh, Lego Movie, except zip lines. That's me. Um, <laughs> and so I'm throwing to my just most patient and amazing co host in the world who managed to pull this off. Everyone, round of applause. Only, only sort of. I mean, look at it. Look, just look at it. The content shine through, brother. Look Believe in yourself. Look at my work, see mighty in despair. <laughs> um, I, I'm Galen Herbst de Cortina, Chickenators on Twitch. Um, and we probably have a command for Twitters and stuff like that. I don't even remember at this point. Um, frankly, lately, <laughs> what I have been playing is Into the Breach because that is like one of the few things that my laptop can run really easily without me worrying too much about it. Uh, actually, the laptop's fine, but it's small screen and stuff. Before that, before the whole PC issue, which has really been annoying me, I was playing the heck, meeting Noah, I was playing the heck out of Subnautica because it was fun. And let me tell you, I was playing the game not to relax because even though I don't have necessarily a fear of the deep, when I'm 500 meters down and it's dark, and I hear a Reaper Leviathan roar, I am still, I have lost a Seamoth to panic ejecting from it when I got grabbed because I didn't know it was going to happen. So it was a lot of fun, but it was not stress reducing. And in terms of what else I've been playing to not stress reduce, Dark Souls Remastered on my Switch. Um, so apparently roll, that's how I've been roll, feeling lately. Roll. Yeah, exactly. Apparently that's how I've been feeling lately. Um, we... Plan on being back next week, and I don't know that we have something specifically picked out yet. Um, and the week after that, we're talking about uh, being the manager behind the stream. So not like agency manager, but like spouse slash partner who is making sure that things keep going and that the wheels stay on the bus. Eating the veggies when it comes to managing a stream. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So. The one who has to eat the salad without dressing. Um, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. And thank you, Thanks. Noah and Nick Laffy Taffy, for joining us. And we are out. <laughs>